Hello everyone. I want to apologize in advance for the wind noise you'll hear throughout this video. The project was done during the early spring of 2013 and that is the windy season around here. So there really wasn't much I could do about it, but I hope you still find the video useful. All right, let's get started. Hey, greetings everyone. Just going to do a little video about this build out of this Harbor Freight um, trailer I'm doing here. Hopefully someone will find it useful. This is their heavy duty model. I believe the gross vehicle weight is about 1,980 pounds. The uh, website lists the actual weight of the trailer is 260 pounds. That puts your net uh, vehicle weight, the amount of freight that you can actually carry down to about 1,720 pounds. Of course, if you're going to put a deck on it, you also want to make sure you add that weight to your, uh, subtract it from your gross vehicle weight to determine how much you can actually carry on this thing. I'm sure you can probably carry a little bit more than what they say, but of course they have to be safe. They don't want to be sued. And of course you want to be safe too, you don't want to have an accident on the highway and cause anyone else some harm. Anyway, right now I've got this thing up on some saw hearts just because I was doing some welding and it's a little bit tough to work when it's down low on the ground, so I wanted to get it up there. And I'll show you that here in a second. Just a few words about getting it to this point before I go on to any custom modifications that I've done. I'm not really going to go into the details of how I build it because A, that time has already passed and B, it's pretty simple. Really, my advice is to take all the parts and lay them out on the ground first to make sure you have all the pieces in the proper location. Although the documentation refers to certain arms and braces by certain nomenclature, they don't actually mark that nomenclature on the piece itself. And although some of the pieces look very similar, they are in fact different. So lay them out on the ground and make sure all the holes line up where you want them before you start putting bolts in. The other advice I have is uh, if you have an impact driver, get yourself an adapter. 3 8 inch, they'll let you put a socket on here. Most of these bolts are 16 millimeter head and then a 17 millimeter wrench to get underside on the underside and these will uh, tighten up very quickly and make uh, short work out of putting this frame together. Also, the other thing to note of importance is the wheels since really some of the key failure points on your trailer are going to be your wheels and your hitch because that's those are the three points where all your weight are going to be distributed to the ground. Uh, typically they don't recommend more than four to five hundred pounds on the tongue weight and the rest of the weight is going to be borne by these two wheels and the subsequent axle. So the directions do recommend that you take the bearings and the hub apart and take and wash all the existing grease out of there using whatever sort of a solvent you want to. That you feel safe with. Some people use gas. I used uh, kerosene. And then repack the bearings. As far as repacking the bearings, what I suggest there, if you've never done it before, just go onto the YouTube and search for repacking bearings. There's a bunch of videos out there, a couple guys who took their time to show you how to do it. It's pretty simple. I'd also suggest you invest a few extra dollars and buy the top of the line bearing grease. Don't use general purpose grease because if you're out on the road with a lot of weight, those bearings are being taken a lot of abuse, and you don't want to be going down the road and have your uh, bearings fail on you. If you ever watch Shipping Wars, you'll see some of those knuckleheads don't take care of their axles, and they've had that happen. Pretty bad when you've got a couple thousand pounds on your trailer. Some of the key modifications I'm making to this trailer is I'm putting my own stake pockets on the outside, because the outside dimensions of this trailer are almost exactly 4 feet by 8 inches, and they put the stake pocket on the inside. So if you use their stake pockets to put the stakes on, you're not going to be able to put a 4 by 8 sheet of whatever in there, plywood, with the stakes on. I want to be able to have stakes out here and have plywood, whatever, drywall in there so that it doesn't accidentally slide off the trailer. What I've elected to do here is actually weld this on. I know they make versions of this where you have two flanges here, you can bolt it in. But, hey, I wanted to learn how to weld, so I picked up a little inexpensive flex core welder from Northern Tool for $140. And this is actually my first welding project. I'm sure some of you professional welders will uh, have some comments about how pretty that isn't, but they say practice makes perfect, and this is my practice. Anyway, I picked these up from uh, redtrailers.com. The gauge uh, steel on the stake pocket is actually thicker than what the trailer is. And I think the cost with shipping came out to about $4 a piece. There's two on each side, so that's eight. And mentioning uh, redtrailers.com, I just found them on the internet, but the guy's pretty helpful. I talked to him on the phone, and he volunteered a lot of information. Apparently, they have a lot of tool or a lot of uh, parts for these uh, Harbor Freight trailers. 
I've heard a lot of people say that you can't get parts from Harbor Freight itself, but he says he's got just about everything except for the tongue. So if you uh, do need something, give him a call. Check him out at RidgeHours.com. I am not affiliated with them in any way whatsoever. Um, these came. There was no hole in them here, so I don't have a drill press. My last Chinese drill press smoked, so I just put this in a vise and drilled a 3 8 inch hole out using two straight lines to find the center. The other modification I'm doing is I'm putting these D-rings on. These are pretty heavy duty, especially for this trailer. As you can see, it says uh, 11,000 pounds. I also elected to weld these on, once again, because I wanted uh, some practice welding. The other thing is, when you start uh, putting extra holes in load-bearing structures, or frame members like this here, you're going to reduce the strength of that member. So I really didn't want to do that. I'm sure those beats and people say it would still be safe, but nonetheless, just uh, one thing to consider. There's just one thing I wanted to point out. This is the rear of the trailer, and I actually took this rear member and the front member off and welded these on my little uh, welding table because, A, it's a lot easier to weld when you're welding down as opposed to trying to weld uh, on the vertical like this, at least for me. The problem I had was Believe it or not, when metal gets too hot, uh, it warps, so this little baby has bowed in a little bit here. I tried to hammer it out, but it's still a bit of a bow there. You can see where they cut out the stake pocket. It eventually, essentially took the strength out of this metal right where the heat was. So if you're going to weld these uh, thin U-channel Harbor Freight trailers, do uh, be cautious about that. There was one other thing I forgot to mention about this trailer. The uh, typical price of Harbor Freight is around $350. They have those neat little 20% off coupons, which took it down to around $280, which makes it a pretty good bargain, even though I have to spend a little bit of money for the extra hardware. It's still a pretty good bargain. I looked at the trailers at Lowe's, and they're about twice to three times the price, and quite frankly, the quality of those does not inspire me to justify that extra expense. So, For what this is, it's probably a pretty good purchase. If you're going to be doing uh, long distance hauling with a lot of weight, I wouldn't push something like this. I'd just go spend the extra money and get yourself a more expensive, more durable long haul trailer if that's what you need. I just want to note one thing. Here we're looking at uh, the tongue of the trailer here. Looking inside. What Harbor Freight did is they provided uh, two bolts, one for the back and one for the front. And they go the whole way across here. What I've seen uh, Reese, the Reese people do, the Reese Hitch people, they always recommend that you have four individual bolts. So I basically went out and got some half-inch bolts by whatever these are, inch and a half. And so now you have four bolts holding this um, little adapter that hooks onto your ball on your vehicle, onto the actual frame of the trailer. So in theory, it's going to make it a little bit stronger. If you're able to lose one of these long bolts that they provided originally, you'd have lost half your connection strength, or if it were to shear off for some reason. This way you've got uh, four independent fastening points here, so if you were to have one or two of those shear off, you'd still have quite a bit of fastening power. May or may not ever matter, but uh, for a few pennies, definitely a nice safeguard to have. Hey, just another note here about my decision for going with this decking. If you notice here, these U-channels that run across the trailer are not quite as wide as the uh, U-channels that run front to back because they fit inside down here. So you've also got your bolts here, top and bottom. If you're going to lay a sheet of 4 bay plywood over here, you'd have to A, do a cutout for these bolt heads, and you'd also have a height difference between your outside and your inside here, whatever the thickness of the steel is, about an eighth of an inch. So you get a little bit of a bow to your plywood, unless you were to put some spacers, you know, between the plywood and the, uh, the U-channel here to make it all the same height. What I'm going to do, just by putting this old scrap pressure treated 2x4 here, I'm just going to butt it up against the edge of the U-channel that runs front to rear. This will be bolted down into here with some 3 8 inch hardware. And then on top of this, I'll sit my 2 by 10s Of course, they'll be flush with the outside of the trailer, so I have a 4 by 8 surface. 
needs to probably just be fastened into the 2x4s running uh, side to side with decking screws, perhaps some um, 3 8 inch bolts in strategic places just to give it some extra strength so it doesn't ever lift off the uh, off the frame when you're heading down the highway with no load. One other note, I've seen some guys on the YouTube with these guys, these trailers, they'll basically take and weld all these connections here where the U-channels meet. They say it gives it a gives you a stronger frame. It may, it probably does, but I'm not sure if it really matters. I mean, for this thing to shear, you're going to have to shear off two bolts or shear through this uh, U-channel here. That's going to take a lot of force to do that. So I'm not really sure you're going to gain much by welding it. The problem you introduce if you weld it, if you've ever been one of these guys and you want to replace it, you've now got a completely solid welded structure you have to cut through to replace if you made some extra work for yourself. But, your decision. Hey everybody, welcome back. Just a little update on this Harbor Freight trailer project here. First thing I did was, these were welded on here, and of course the paint was uh, damaged in the process. So I took some sandpaper, scuffed down the gloss, sprayed some Valspar primer on there, and then hit it with this Rust-Oleum High Performance Enamel. It's a safety red. It's not a perfect match, but the point here is to protect us from rusting further. That Rust-Oleum is pretty nice paint. It has a really nice spray pattern. It comes out pretty forceful, pretty even. On the other hand, that Valspar primer, that's probably one of the worst rattle cans I've ever used. cannot recommend that. The paint might be all right, but uh, dispersal from the can is absolutely horrible. We also completed the wiring on this. You can see we put the wiring inside of this protective uh, blue cover there and cable tied it to the frame. Just an ounce of prevention in case uh, somebody should ever fray the wire and short your electrical system out and blow your fuse in your vehicle. And the last thing we've done is put these 2x4s horizontally from side to side, 3 3 8 by 2 inch bolts. We took a 1 inch bore and bored down so that the bolt heads are essentially countersunk. We'll use these to screw and bolt the 2x10s over across the top of this. So the next thing to do right now is to drop this baby down on the ground and start putting the 2x10s on, and I'll give you an update after that. All right. Okay, we got the trailer back on the ground now, and I've laid out the uh, 2x10s I'm going to use for the decking. As you can see, those are rough cuts, and they're actually 2 inches thick, not the... Uh, inch and a half of the finished product you buy in the hardware store. And it's probably overkill if I'm going to be needing here, but really there's an alternative reason for using these. I bought them uh, from an Amish guy a couple years ago for another project that I shelved, and they've been sitting around the shed since they're, you know, since throwing them away, but taking up quite a bit of space, so I get to put them to a good use. And it's also a pretty good deck. I don't think anything's going to bust through that. I think the axle probably gave out before those uh, babies gave out. These will be screwed into the 2x4s that I bolted to the frame using standard deck screws. And I'm also going to put 10 3 inch hex bolts just in case whatever starts to rot out, those deck screws don't give loose when it's heading down the road. I'll have uh, 10 bolts holding on there pretty securely. Alright, I'm going to lay them out and start putting some screws in. And when I'm finished, I'll cut the fronts and the backs off, square everything up, and I'll give you an update then. Oh, just one other thing. I'm sure someone's probably asking, how did you choose that beautiful blue? Well, it's part of the philosophy of this is to try to use up uh, things I've got laying around the house, put them to good use, and a couple gallons of old latex paint laying around. So when I mixed them all together to come up with a color to just treat this wood, that's what I ended up with. So it's not too bad. It actually kind of matches the uh, color that the county government uses for all their vehicles and logos. Hey, making some progress here. Got four of our five uh, planks down. Hard to believe how many tools you need just to put a couple, uh, bolt a couple planks to some two by fours. But the last one's almost a perfect fit. Probably gonna have to rip a little bit off the end. Maybe I'll get lucky and I'll be able to get the saw right up the uh, trailer with it mounted in place. We'll see what happens. Basically, these are bolted on uh, this member and this member back here using three eighths by four, kind of sunk down in with a one inch wood bore. It's a perfect fit for that three eighth inch washer. But after this, I'm going to take it out for a little test drive. I'll let you know how it works. Hey, I've got two more holes to bore here. Just going to show you how we do this. Already marked our hole. We're just going to line up with our 2x4 underneath. 
going to use my uh, nut driver here with a one inch wood bore in it and just go down deep enough to uh, recess that head, that hex bolt head. Should be good enough. Another drill all set to go with a 3 8 inch bit. Get the dirt out of the way. Need a 3 8 inch by 4 hex head bolt with a 3 inch washer. Pop this baby down there. And we'll bolt it up from underneath. That's about it. One more to go and this baby, this deck is down. You can really speed the uh, fastening of these nuts up using your trusty handy uh, nut driver here. Just get yourself a little 3 inch adapter. Standard uh, socket. You stick a 9 16 in both the bolt head and the nut. Put your wrench underneath to keep it from moving. And that's all she wrote. Okay, here we are with the deck all fastened down. These um, two by tens are actually nine feet long. I was just going to put a square across there and cut off the front and the back so it was exactly eight feet to match the trailer. And this last board's maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch too wide, and I was going to rip that. But now that I think about it, I just might leave it like this. Give me a little bit longer deck when I'm running a flatbed. I can just take a saw and cut out for those pockets in the front and back and notch them here on the sides a little bit because, frank, frankly, this just might work out better in the end. And a couple of years ago, I probably would have, would have obsessed about this if this wasn't exactly 4 by 8 inches, but I think these days I'm getting a little bit mellow. I'll let you know how it works out. Let's drive with this. It rides pretty good. You really can't hear it bouncing around back there. It's pretty quiet. The thing I don't like is you can't really even tell it's back there unless you're going around a turn, so I'm probably going to get a couple of uh, half-inch electrical uh, PVC conduit paint it yellow and safety orange and hang them off the corners of the trailer so I can tell what's going on back there. Especially helpful if you're trying to back it up. I think from here I have to tie up the cables in the front there. A little bit sloppy right now. And cut some stakes and cut pockets out to the decking for the stakes to fit in. Since I'm not going to trim this uh, deck board back to 8 feet. And I'd also like to put some size on it because I'd like to be able to haul some loose mulch. Not sure how to do that yet. I've seen a couple guys using uh, five quarter boards, five quarter by six, and a few guys using plywood. I'm just afraid the plywood is going to warp over time and not fit tight when you have uh, material spilling out on the highway. So we'll see what happens maybe tomorrow. Alright, cheers!